Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program and in this video I'm going to teach you how to recreate the Apollo 11 mission that NASA did in 1969. If you obviously you should know but if you don't know then uh, this was the first mission where humans landed on the moon and uh, yeah we're gonna first of all I'm gonna show you how to build the rocket and how to set everything up and then after that we'll go to the launch pad and I'll show you how to fly the mission and uh, it's fairly accurate I'd say it's you know accurate enough to be um, to be called a recreation tutorial, but it's not com you know it's not 100% accurate obviously because there are some things which you don't need to do in KSP and obviously the rocket isn't quite to scale because of the way things work in KSP, but it is a fairly accurate representation. So at the top of the rocket we've got an MK1-2 command pod with two uh, parachutes mounted radially. Um, a small RCS tank on top of that, then a docking port, and then directly above that we've actually got one of the new launch um, launch escape systems. And uh, we're going to set up the action groups for that in a minute, I'll show you those a bit later. Anyway then we've got a stack separator, that can also be a decoupler, it's just the stack separators are smaller, so that's what I've chosen to use here. And then uh, underneath that we've actually got a standard size fuel tank with four RCS thrusters around it, obviously to use the RCS that's in this tank. So, underneath that we have, um, this is a Poodle engine, a Rockamax Poodle engine, and then a stack separator again, one of the larger ones. Underneath that we also have a docking port, this is for the lander, uh, this is the command and service module. This is the lander module here, or lunar module, or Muna module actually, it would probably be called in Kerbal Space Program. And underneath that we've got another of those RCS tanks, I think it's an FLR25 or something, something like that. And then a MK2 command pod, and that's actually got um, it's actually got these solar panels around the top. That's just for sure really, that doesn't really, we won't really need those, the mission isn't very long. And uh, yeah, there, it's all manned anyway. So yeah, it's not too big a deal, but you can stick those on if you want, they're optional. And then we've got four RCS thrusters round here, obviously that's so that we can use the RCS on this. We've also got a little ladder there and uh, there's also a thin fuel tank here with four of these landing legs, LT1 landing struts around it. Underneath that we've got an LV909 liquid engine, so that's actually a smaller diameter engine, it's this one. Um, and that's all we really need for the lander, it doesn't need to be too powerful, it's quite lightweight that engine and quite efficient too. Uh, you'll also notice that this is strutted up um, just from the command pod to the uh, stack separator and it's the same down here um, on the next stack separator we've strutted from the fuel tank to the stack separator anyway then we have two standard fuel tanks and then a Rockamax skipper engine that's going to be our transfer stage and it's also probably going to circularize our orbit, finish off our orbit but now we have the lifting stages and the first one of those has one of the large adapters, obviously there's a decoupler there as well. Um, then the largest fuel tank in the game, which is was added new, it's this one here. And then a Kerberdyne KR2L engine. Then another decoupler, one of the largest size decouplers, this one. And then underneath that another one of the largest size tanks. And then this engine, which is the pa most powerful engine in the game at the moment. Uh, stock obviously and it's the KS25 times 4 engine cluster. Around that I've just put a few of these winglets as well in 4 times symmetry just to make it look a bit nicer but those aren't really necessary if you don't want them. So this rocket is actually perfectly capable of getting there with a lot less in the way of um, fuel. You can you know make it there with a little bit less fuel here and there if you're very efficient but I've made sure that it should be possible you know however good you are at the game as long as you're decent at flying, then you should be able to do it. Um, so you know, if you can go to the moon normally without doing an Apollo mission, you can probably do this. Uh, with you know, you, you should be able to do this absolutely fine. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for the rocket. The last thing I'm going to do is look at the staging and the action groups. So the first stage is obviously going to be that first engine cluster down there. Then we're going to split that off and activate the next engine. Split it off and activate the next engine again, that's the skipper there and then uh, after that we're actually going to split off this part and activate this engine up here but we're probably going to do this all manually in flight, that's a little bit easier to do and uh, I'll explain that when we're actually in flight that's how we're going to stage it anyway and then after that we're going to split off um, split off this stack separator then in the next stage we're going to activate this engine down here 
And then the stage after that, we're just going to split off here, and the last stage has the launch escape system and the parachutes, but the launch escape system won't be there by then. So, action groups, this is for the launch escape system, pretty much, yeah, all of it is. So we're going to go into the abort um, thing, which you can actually access with the user interface, which is at the top of your screen when you're in flight. And there's a little abort button that appears there if you hover over it. I think you can also hit delete on the keyboard, that does the same thing. And basically, what we're doing is uh, activating the engine on the launch escape system and decoupling with this, um, sorry, decoupling with this stack separator here. So that obviously the pod gets split off and this thing fires so that you get flipped out the way of the rocket. Now on the custom 01, we have a system which actually takes this away, gets rid of this without taking the command pod with it. And uh, that's just a decouple command and undock node command on the cl clampertron docking port here and then firing the launch escape system obviously. So now we're going to head to launch pad and I'll show you how to fly this thing. So here we are and uh, before we launch I'd just like to say that this is all going to be at two times speed. Um, so first of all obviously we're going to hit spacebar, turn on SAS and throttle up, the usual, and uh, as soon as we start getting to maybe eight kilometers or so up we're going to have to start that gravity turn but up until there there's not really much we have to do. Once, uh, once you get a little bit higher up as well you can use the one key to activate that action group that we made earlier but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, I leave it till we're up in space just because you know it's not very much extra weight to carry just in case something goes wrong I guess I don't really know and um, so yeah that's what we're doing and there we go that's our stage at six kilometers and now we're just starting to think about pitching over and there we go you'll start to see very very slowly I'm gonna start a gravity turn and hopefully we'll be finished turning down to well a pitch of 45 degrees by you know somewhere around 13 14 kilometers that's uh, usually ideal so there we go, that's 13 kilometers and we're there. And now we just need to hold that pitch and uh, keep burning until we get into orbit. So, you'll see the Kerbals are looking, well, Jeb's looking fairly happy. And yeah, everything's going pretty smoothly at the moment. Soon, yeah, we'll need to go and look in our, uh, look in our map to go and make sure that apoapsis doesn't get too high because we only want to get it to maybe 80 kilometers up. And we're going to have to finish off uh, heightening the apoapsis with the next stage as well and we'll also circularize and make our um, transfer burn with this stage and this is the stage where you might have a little bit of trouble um, with the delta v because this is you know you have to be reasonably efficient to get this all to work but if uh, if you can't do it you can either add a little bit more fuel to this stage or you can actually do the um, docking and everything once you're in a circular orbit and then you can start the burn and do the burn with the command and service module but that's not how they did it in the real Apollo and I didn't want to make this stage any bigger just because then the rocket would look even more out of proportion because it does look a little bit out of proportion now um, but that's just because of the nature of um, you know the scale of the solar system and the scale of the Kerbal, Kerbal system because that's well I think that's the community given name anyway so now we're just circularizing the orbit around 80 kilometers is fine and uh, yeah it's a fairly easy thing to do you can do it however you want but I've got a tutorial on the basic orbiting that kind of thing which covers this so go and watch that if you're not sure and if there's anything you're not sure about then uh, you know go and look at the relative go and look at the related tutorial on my channel because I've got a big playlist of them I think there's 15 16 17 in there now and uh, you can go and have a look if you're not sure so you know there's loads of help there if you need it but anyway now we're waiting till the moon comes on the horizon you can see there it's just about to be on the horizon so i'm starting to point prograde and when we just start to see the moon appearing over the horizon which you can see in the map view it's just happening there that's when we need to start burning prograde somewhere around there it's just a rule of thumb but it's a really good rule of thumb it works really really well so now that we're just starting to burn prograde you'll see our apoapsis is going up and we just need to wait for that to get up high enough um, that it basically we'll get an encounter with the moon and hopefully we're going to bring our periapsis around the moon around down to around 10 kilometers or so if we can get it a little bit above that that makes it a little bit easier but we don't want to make it too high above that because then it becomes a lot less efficient 
So maybe 10-15 kilometers is ideal and you can use the RCS that's built in just to fine tune that periapsis as I did there. And I think I got it up to 14 kilometers, which is pretty much ideal. And there we go, we manually decouple that just because this bit's easier to do manually. Then we point north because if we point north, then when we flip this bit around, which we manually decoupled with the, um, with the docking port, not the decoupler because we want to keep that shield on for now. Then all we have to do is point south and we should be pointing in the right direction. And there we go. It takes a couple of seconds for the docking ports to attract to each other properly. But uh, once we've done that, everything's fine. And now it's time to actually, um, well, here we, I just adjust the uh, periapsis again because that movement obviously changed it a little bit because it's a very fine adjustment. And then it's time to basically time warp over to the moon. We want to go over this time, uh, sorry, this orbit border, as you can see there. Uh, into the encounter with the moon as slowly as we can so that that periapsis stays the same because otherwise the physics can play up a little bit and that's a bit of a pain. So anyway now we're at the point where we need to burn retrograde to circularize the orbit and we just need to decouple that shield for the engine and then start burning. It's a fairly easy thing to do, nothing too special. So there we go, just burn retrograde at your periapsis. If you don't know um, the basic orbital stuff like this, then you should go and watch the tutorials I have on that because I do have them. And there we go, that's us finished that circularization burn. So now I'm going to make a maneuver. Oh, well, actually, I was just looking to see because if you're not too good at rendezvous and docking, then you might want to make your orbit um, equatorial around the moon. And, uh, you know, I've got tutorials on all that kind of thing as well. But as long as it's reasonably equatorial, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. If it's a polar orbit, then things can start to get a little bit more interesting there. Because what happens is, as the moon spins, you, after the moon's done one rotation, which it has to do before you can launch to get back up to, um, you know, to rendezvous again, then uh, if you do that, yeah, it, it gets a bit more difficult. I'll explain it in a second because you'll see what I mean. But anyway, now we've uh, moved the Kerbals over to the la landing module, lunar module, moon module, whatever you want to call it, and start burning retrograde. And we just want to burn what I'd like to call the horizontal of your retrograde. So that's the bit of the horizon on the nav ball that's closest to your retrograde marker, as I'm doing here. And basically that's how we're going to get rid of all of our horizontal velocity, so we're just falling straight down. And there we go, we deploy the landing gear. And now I'm starting to pitch up a little bit, just because I want to make sure that the retrograde marker is at the very top of our nav ball. If, if it is, then that means we're falling straight down, because obviously the prograde marker will be at the bottom of the nav ball, which will be towards the ground. So there we go, and you can you can do this bit from IVA if you want. I didn't in the end, I just had a quick look. But yeah, now we just need to control our velocity, make sure we're not going too fast, and then as we really start to get close to the ground, we're going to need to throttle up. And we want to land ideally under 5 meters a second, but under 10 meters a second is probably still safe. And if you did everything right, you should still be falling straight down. You can make little adjustments like I'm doing to make sure you keep falling straight down, and then as you get really close to the ground, you just throttle up, and you should come down fairly slowly. So that was a few meters a second there, that's pretty good. So now you can go and, uh, well, take some screenshots, <laughs> and then uh, from there, all you have to do is EVA, you can use the ladder if you want, I decide not to in the end, plant a flag, and, uh, you know, do whatever you want to do on the moon, basically, I mean, you got there, you deserve to have some fun while you're there, but we're just going to plant a flag and hop back in the capsule, and then uh, I'll show you what I mean about the equatorial orbits, basically if your orbit isn't very equatorial, if it's anything probably more inclined than this, then you'll find that as the moon rotates, you drift out of line of the orbit of the uh, command and service module, which, are, uh, which is obviously the bit you want to rendezvous with. So that means when you burn, you're not going to just burn in line with the orbit of the command and service module. You're going to have to burn sort of across like I'm doing here. So I'm having to burn a little bit north as I burn up to take off. And uh, now you'll just see, this is like a normal rendezvous, it's a little bit more complicated though, you've got to burn and try and get the rendezvous markers together. So if you t you're too far ahead, you're going to have to burn up a little bit so that you spend more time in, you know, further away from the moon looping round. If you're too far behind, you're going to have to burn more horizontally to speed yourself up. And then once you get those together, all you're going to need to do is burn, look, uh, set the command and service module as your target, which you should have already done. And then when you start to get a little bit closer, you're going to want to burn target retrograde on the nav ball. So set the target, set the nav ball to target mode. 
and then burn what will be retrograde. So that means you're getting rid of the difference in velocity between you and your target. And that's going to put you in very similar orbits. So you want to keep doing this until you end up um, very close within maybe five kilometers and with very similar orbits or very low tar target velocity. And now what we're going to do is actually burn towards our target because obviously we need to go towards it. So we're going to point towards the target on the nav ball, which is the pink circle marker, and then burn a little bit prograde till we're going at maybe five meters a second or so, maybe 10, doesn't really matter until you get a lot closer and then you're just going to have to dock with it. So you can do that however you want. Um, but once you get really close like this, I find the easiest way is for one of you to point north and one of you to point south. And if you do that, then your direction will pretty much never change. <clears throat> Which means that, uh, so if you know one's pointing north, you know the other one has to point south and they'll be going, you know, the docking ports will be in the right place basically. And from there you can just use the RCS to maneuver yourself around. I do it with the command and service module, but you can do it whichever way you want. You don't need to, um, you know, you don't. it doesn't matter really. Uh, it depends what you want to do and what's easiest. Now one thing I would say is you could probably actually do this mission without any RCS on the lander, but I don't think that's how Apollo did it. Um, Apollo 11 did it. So, you know, put RCS on both of them and use whichever one you find easiest, basically. I think the lander module would be the easiest one to do, but because I was already at, at, as the lander module, it was easier for me to set that one to north than only switch vessels once. And there we go, we're just transferring all the fuel from the lander module over, and then uh, jumping the kerbals back into the other one. And we're going to leave the landing module in orbit here. So there we go, now we can decouple that. And now all we need to do is get back to Kerbin, and this is relatively easy. So you need to think, which way is the moon going? It's going uh, counterclockwise around Kerbin, so we need to go in the opposite direction of that when we leave the orbit, so that we end up using the moon's velocity to slow us down rather than speed us up. So there we go, we've got a maneuver there that's going to take us um, out straight out of the moon's orbit and with a low Kerbin periapsis, but if you can't, if you can't do this then just get out of the moon's orbit and then burn retrograde when you're at your apoapsis around curve and it doesn't really matter. This is the most efficient way to do it though by quite a long way. So there we are. And now we're just waiting to get to that maneuver node and obviously um, we're below 10 kilometers now because our periapsis is at like 9.8 which means that we couldn't time warp as fast as we probably could have done with but now we can. And uh, now it's just a case of burning towards the maneuver node. And I actually don't use the maneuver node because this is the kind of thing which is easier to adjust with, you know, by burning more prograde or more retrograde um, than it is to try and fiddle about with the maneuver node really. And there we go, just get our periapsis down to something sensible maybe, um, you know, 20, 30 kilometers is good, anything higher than that and you might end up coming back out of the atmosphere and uh, having to make another approach, which you don't really want to do. And uh, anyway, I see here that we're coming down relatively close to KSC in the sense that, you know, we can see it. And we've got plenty of fuel, so I decide why not just burn and bring ourselves just off the coast uh, to splash down, just off the coast of KSC. Let's see if we can get within sight of the vehicle assembly building. So there we are. Uh, you can see I'm just changing my inclination a bit and then so that we sort of come over the KSC and then burning retrograde to reduce the orbit as much as I can. But you don't have to do any of this, as long as you land in the ocean then it's realistic. And if you land on land that doesn't really matter either, it should be fine. So you can do this however you want, it's just that I had the opportunity to land near KSC and I uh, kind of decided that that would be fun. So that's what I did. And there we go. Just time warp down. And actually, for some reason, I think it's just the way KSP calculates this kind of thing. This thing actually wants to point the other way around, so I have to use SAS to sort of lock it in position a little bit. But that's not too big a deal. And there we are, we've passed the sort of re-entry phase, and now all we have to do is come down, deploy our parachutes to slow us down a little bit, because I wanted to land as close as I could to the KSC. Obviously, you know, you want to land in the ocean though, ideally. And there we are, we're coming down and it's a pretty successful mission. So anyway guys, thanks for watching the video, I hope it helped, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, I don't know, it was kind of fun making it, and I hope it gives you a bit more of an insight into how Apollo 11 was done, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to recreate it if you, you know, in your spare time as well. 
Anyway, if you have any suggestions or questions, then leave a comment down below. If you want to see more tutorials from me, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.